Eric, for some reason, I'm having trouble hearing you, but I think you just said something to me. Um, okay. Well, let's try this there again. There you are. Oh. That's... There you are. Turns out if you plug the USB cable in, works like a champ. Oh. So, okay. I'm like, I'm checking my, my headphones. No, no. We're going to take it from the top. Let's start again. Howdy. <laughs> it's Tuesday. It's 2.02. It's not 2 o'clock anymore. Eric's late. 2 o'clock, Tilson Live. We're coming to you live on YouTube and on Facebook, as we do each and every single week, to talk about all things Build On Your Land. I'm Eric Allard, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, didn't have the mic on. Didn't have the mic plugged in. <laughs> it's not a wireless mic, as it were. Um, and I'm joined, as I am, thank goodness, by Don Dantzler, Vice President of Marketing Customer Experience for Tilson Homes, version 2.0. How are we doing now? We are doing much better now. That, that worked. That worked a lot better. So we're doing great. How are you doing? Yes, I'm doing great. <laughs> obviously, everything's going well. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So everything's anyway, fine. we are here. We are. Yeah, really live, guys. In case we're you legit sure. live. Yeah, no, we 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 just started doing this last week. So we uh, have we have lots of things to talk about. All things build on your land. That's why we're here to help you, guide you through this process, educate you, get the right information. Turns out. Donna, you may not know this. This is a surprise. There's a lot of misinformation on the internet. No way. Yep. You mean yep. like it's just anybody can post things and pretend they're true? Correct. And they can do so under a pseudonym or, you know, not even their name. Mm -hmm. um, so they can. Uh, they can do it with reviews. They can do it with uh, information. They can do it with uh, homes. So great news. This is the trusted source. Tilson's been doing this for over 90 years, four generations of family owned and operated building on your land in Texas. So obviously if you're building a home on your land in Texas or thinking about it, this is the place to get your information. This is the right information. You're going to get the right stuff. We're not going to, we're not going to blow smoke. We will tell you if it's a good idea, if it's not a good idea, if we're mm -hmm. not sure, you know, we're going to let you know, we're going to let you know, we're not going to let you get in trouble. We're going to keep you out of trouble. We're going to keep you educated. We're going to keep the process smooth and efficient. We're going to remove the friction. We're going to increase the familiarity. But today, specifically, we're going to talk about something special, a very long-awaited subject. As we are doing that, folks, jump in. Tell us where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process you are in, whether you're just thinking about doing this. This is an idea that popped up. You clicked on an ad. Great job, Don. If you did all those things fine. Or maybe you're further down the line. Maybe, maybe you've started the process. Maybe you've decided which house you want. Maybe you've already entered into an agreement and you're picking colors and you've done your site evaluation, or maybe you're under construction. Love you folks jump in and ask questions too. What's happening next? What should I expect? And then maybe, Hey, you've already done this and you're just here to share your wealth of knowledge with the community, telling them what a great process this is and not to be scared. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's mm -hmm. what this is all about. The independent Texas lifestyle is worth it. It is worth the endeavor, and it's a fun journey. So, Dawn, while they're jumping in, tell us what they're doing. Where in the world? What, what are we talking about today? What are we even doing? We're talking about our brand new model in San Marcos, the Paladuro. So, the the nice. most requested and most delayed model tour um, that we've had, just with weather and complications and all of those things. It's also my fault. Also my fault. That, well, and partially because, and you'll hear Eric say it a lot um, in the video tour that he's gonna gonna take us through. That was pre-recorded, the pre-recorded part. This is big. It's a big house. She big, big house. she big girl. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of just amazing things in this house. So it took took a little longer to get her built, but man, was the wait worth it. She is for gorgeous. Sure. For sure. So thank you all Super for joining us as you're jumping in, Don. Let's see where these folks are jumping in from. Guys, keep dropping where you are in the process. Drop where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process you're in. Any questions, of course, that's what we're really here for, to answer questions. We're going to show you a big, beautiful model home. That'll be great. But but uh, we want to we want to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got Aristotle joining us from Gatesville. Hey there. Here we've I was thinking least... Aristotle was in Greece. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm 50-50 I'm, I'm if this is a real name or not, Aristotle. No, no, Gatesville, no, no for sure. There's Aristotle in Gatesville. No doubt about it. All right. I didn't know about the ponder part. He's either aptly named or we've got a pseudonym happening. <laughs> um, we got Lisa Howdy from our Tilson Build site in Bandera, teleworking from the barn this week. Awesome. Uh, we got a chance to meet Shame. with Justin Ordino and Jeff Waite this morning. Oh, oh very cool. cool. And you spelled his name right. So that is that's that is impressive. a challenging thing. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. really impressive. Yeah. Awesome. To them. Look at that. Glad to hear that. That's amazing. Good. Uh, we've got Jason saying, hey guys. Hey Jason, good to see you again. What's up, Jason? 
We have Phyllis from Valley Mills, and she is in the process of building her home. Awesome. Phyllis needs to meet Aristotle because Valley Mills ain't far from uh, Gatesville. Neighbors. Cool. We got Ashley saying hello again from California. So excited to see the Polidoro. We are excited oh, yeah. to share it. Great. So. Um, Aristotle saying Gatesville, Texas, done with the stakeout. Very cool. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, we got Tim watching from Southern California. Plan to, great to see the plan. Oh, plan to see the Polidoro in a few weeks. So I guess he's coming out in person. Awesome. All right. Um, Jason is sharing. I finally got our land transferred into our name. Can Tilson recommend a contractor for the installation of a culvert and road access into the property? Angelina County and no, the county does not install cul culverts anymore. So it's all on me. It's you almost like Jason you called them and they told you verbatim that exact right. No, we don't it's install like it no been more. Here before. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. We used to. Okay. So yeah, we will, um, Jason, I know you've done it before. Send us a private message and yeah, we'll get you circled up with, um, We'll reach out to, to Juan Moore, one of our site evaluators, and we'll get you linked up with a, a contractor there and get you a culvert installed. So, all right, of course. Then we've got Misty saying hello from Mansfield, building to San Jacinto in Hood County. Right. Have the framing inspection scheduled for the 8th of March. Cool. Awesome. All right. Good job. Aristotle saying it is, but he hey. didn't directly answer the question. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's for she, Don's being all tricky and. Using the double entendres. Good name. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, Denise, hello from Paraland. We'll start in October with the Canyon D in Chapel Hill. I cannot wait to get into our new forever retirement home. Awesome. It's going to be pretty. So, yeah, Chapel Hill, for those of you who don't know, fun fact, that is very close to the birthplace of Texas, Washington on the Brazos. A um, lot of blue bonnets going to be happening here in the next couple of weeks, maybe a month. Um, but they're about to start explode. With all the rain that we've had recently, they are going to explode. Oh, yeah, it's going to be pretty. There's my, I, I'm basically in the Fox and Tawny's field of blue bonnets in Texas. I'm basically, that's my, pretty much my goal. <laughs> so we should just check in with you on Groundhog Day. It's going to be a great happen. blue bonnet uh, crop, whatever they call it. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We've got Patty from Walker County. Hey, Happy Patty. Patty. Um, Ashley saying the stage we are in, we own land in Republic Grand Ranch and now mm -hmm. waiting until my husband is ready to make the move with work or my neck and bricks and down, whichever comes sooner. Yes. Wear him down, Ashley. Wear him down. Wear him down. Work from home is a thing. Just keep going. Keep That's going. That's right. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for joining Yeah, us. so fantastic, folks. Obviously, keep jumping in. Keep asking questions. Um, tell us, again, you know, where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process you're in. Any questions you have, like Jason's asking about culverts, how we get those things installed. Um, most people don't even know what a culvert is. It's a pipe in the yeah. ground. You can put it in the ditch so we can cross over it, like. And some counties install them. Clearly, Angelina County don't do that no more. So um, that's official. Bet you that COVID thing may right. messed up for everybody. Policy. Official county. Yeah, TechStot tried to play that game with me. That they couldn't meet me on my property outside because of COVID. Also, they're closed on Fridays during COVID. Yeah. Oh, state agencies. <laughs> very creative. Yeah. They're very creative at looking for ways to not work. So anyway. Um, here we are, uh, bashing our government and going to look at the, <laughs> anyone who's watching, we love you. We love you. This is, these are all, these are all jokes. This is constructive criticism and good, honest feedback from the taxpaying citizenry. Okay. That's what this is. That's what we're doing. We're here, all to, right. we're here to make you better. We're here to make you better. We're open to feedback too. We're open to feedback too. So let's talk about the Paladero folks. Do jump in again. If you got questions as we go through this. We will, we will stop at intermittent places. They will be arbitrary. Don tells us when to stop. And uh, we'll stop and answer all of those questions. And can't wait to hear from you. So should we get started? Let's get started. Okay. All right. So the Polidoro is a you know, newer home plan. And it's actually the first one that we launched this particular elevation. So we are going to focus on it because it is a neo hill country style. So it's a lot more contemporary, modern-y um, looking than our, our typical Tilson. Um, and it's got, you'll hear Eric in the video say a lot of plate height. So that's just different ceiling heights and different roof line heights. Um, so a lot of, it's very interesting elevation and just, a, you know, new to us. You've got a very impressive entryway here, big, tall windows, big, tall openings, just very, lot, lots of stuff happening. Makes a stucco and stone. It's beautiful, beautiful home. Uh, so this is a finished model, uh, which showcases one of our newer uh, stone selections, a gray stone. Um, 
you know, rather than the typical, we usually see a lot of, um, you know, browns and oranges um, in our stone mix, but this one is actually one of the grays and just looks, it looks just so, so fresh and bright. And you've got the stucco happening and the, the rough sawn accents. Um, and that and obviously there are life. other elevations. Um, yes, so if, if we've got all the not... traditional elevations too. We got a farmhouse. We got a you know a craftsman. We've got all the all the standard elevations, but we just really wanted to to zero in on this one. Yeah. So for some reason, the the this new low pitch multiple plate height hill country design is not your cup of tea. No problem. We have all kinds of other designs this that look nothing like this, but this is a very very popular design in in the hill country. Yes. Um, so the standard uh, floor plan for the Palo Duro is going to be a three bedroom plus a study, two and a half bath um, coming in at a little over 2,700 square feet. Um, it is a really nice floor plan. Um, if you if you spend a lot of time in Tilson land, it would remind you of our Preston uh, floor plan. Uh, but one of the big things about this plan is that big combined family room, dining room, kitchen space that you can really kind of make however however you want to to use that area. So it's just a huge entertainment space. Um, that's just this huge, great room. They all flow into each other, so you can really just host large gatherings with big, you know, with big families, um, as well as. I'm, I'm going to say the biggest pantry we've ever built, um, even on the standard model, um, it's just massive. So Without very question. much designed for if you live way out in the country and you need to be storing a bunch of stuff or you want to have a completely different prep pantry, um, this is this is the house for you. Lots of space in here. Um, that study on the front of the home is absolutely huge. You could honestly share it with another person um, if you're looking to do a homeschool uh, situation. This would very much fit your classroom. Very large study, front of the home, separate from all the bedrooms. So off on its own, private by itself. Um, and one of the other cool features about this home is it is actually a true split bedroom. Um, so the master suite is on one side of the house, almost in its own wing, tucked off in the back. And then you've got the other bedrooms over on the other side, off in their own space as well. So everybody has all of their, you know, everybody has privacy, everything is separate. Um, so just a big open design, great use of space. Um, just a great, I love this plan. I think it's Yeah, amazing. we're seeing a lot yeah. of people want to do like the the appliances in the pantry, like you talk about like a prep kitchen. So, you know, mm -hmm. your air fryer, your crock pot, your bread maker, any of that kind of stuff. Like there is plenty of room to do those. So they're not on your counter, um, you know, available to see. So you can see the big, beautiful, well, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Um, so for the model, we we did we did a few things. We did a few things. Um, so it's actually all in here through um, custom options is the majority of what we did. So these are all options that are that are easily available. Um, the first one is we actually looked at that big beautiful kitchen with that big beautiful pantry and said, you know what? Let's make it bigger. Let's make it bigger. Um, so we are actually showing off the alternate kitchen um, in the model. And so this one actually has two islands. So we've added an extra island um, in the middle, and that's actually where the microwave is. It's in that center island um, in the kitchen. And then the other thing that this did is it actually gives you the double ovens, um, a larger cooktop, just lots of things, and, and an even bigger pantry. Um, so that, that's what came with that option. Um, the second custom option that we put on there is actually the rear covered porch with the cathedral ceiling, which actually does the cathedral ceiling in the family room. Uh, so with the Polidoro, there's actually two options for your cathedral ceiling. So you can do it this way, uh, which is what you would see um, if you've been to our Barton Springs model or our LaSalle model, that it's got that, it, it shoots out onto the porch with the big cedar truss in the back. So it's cathedral ceiling inside. If you chose not to do that back covered porch there, um, it would, the cathedral ceiling would actually run the other way. Um, so it would run from, from the, basically the border, the invisible border between the family room and the dining room is where that would that would actually, no, I'm sorry, it goes all the way, it goes all the way across if you do that cathedral ceiling um, that way. So you could go, you could go this way or you could go that way, with um, whichever, whichever you choose, but we chose to do the porch. Um, the other option we added in is bedroom four with bath three. Um, so our model actually comes in at four bedrooms plus the study and with three and a half baths. So we're showing off um, what that looks like. So you have a self-contained guest suite or a space for an older child that just needs their own while the other two bedrooms um, share a bathroom. 
And then in the master bedroom, we also did, we did some things. We did a couple things. Um, the first is the ceiling treatment in the bedroom itself. We went ahead and went with the stepped ceiling option and then actually added some wrapped beams up in that step. Um, so you'll see that when we get into the video. And then the other thing that we did is a brand new bathroom um, layout that we've added into our portfolio. So this is alternate master bath two. And what that did is we talked we talked about it on a, either last episode or an episode before that. Um, the actual, it's a wet room concept. So it's something you're starting to see in the higher end hotels where you actually have the bathtub contained within the large walk-in shower. So it's actually a separate kind of wet room that's all tiled. Um, so you don't have to worry about splashing or any, you know, anything going on, you know, any, any of that, but it's just a really, really cool look. Um, and also gives you these separate vanities. Um, so yeah, just a great, it's a great model. Great model. So it comes in just under 3,200 square feet of living area. And of course, when, we're, when we give you these mm -hmm. numbers, we're not talking any kind of porch, you know, that's, that's a separate number. It's included in the pricing. We do the, the changes like this, but this number we're showing you that Donna's showing you that's, that's heated and cooled living area. Exactly. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take Folks, a look drop, at the Drop video. your questions and comments into the chat. We will answer all of them. All right. So as you drive up to the Paladuro model off of the freeway in San Marcos, you're going to notice a very different elevation than we've ever done before. It's what we refer to as a Neo Hill Country design that has a lot of varying plate heights, beautiful stone and stucco with a lot of natural wood accents, tapered stone columns throughout, low roof pitch and multiple plate heights, which is a very beautiful design for the Hill Country. Something we've done a little different on this model home in San Marcos is the color of the stone. We've chosen a lot of grays, which is very different from the natural browns and orange and whites that we typically use, but to give our customers an idea that you can do a lot more with the exterior of your home than you thought you might be able to do. So one of the advantages you're gonna notice when we're doing this type of elevation with the multiple plate heights on the outside is we can do very large grand entrances with tall ceilings, which is great because we have a beautiful three and a half foot wide, eight foot tall, very contemporary front door as you come up that just draws you into a beautiful home with soaring ceilings. All right. So yeah, just beautiful, just the way that foyer and everything is set up just with the tall, tall ceilings because you've got a really high ceiling on that porch that just extends in when you walk through. Uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so here's another view of that exterior uh, with the stucco and the stone and the cedar. Just, just very different. I like this style. Yeah, the corbels that you see up here in the eaves, like just a lot of little really neat accents. And yeah, the stucco here. And, and again, the low pitch is a, is a very hill country thing. Um, it, and so we, anyway, we think it's, we think it's great and it's being very well received for sure in the area. Yeah. And we're actually introducing, if you like this elevation, but this floor plan isn't quite your, your cup of tea. We've added it to a lot of our other, yeah. our other don't plans need as well. 3,200 square feet of one story floor plan. <laughs> there mm -hmm. are options. There are options. I think we, we had, let's see. Well, here we go. All right. So here's a, a view of that foyer um, and that beautiful front door um, as you come in. Again, this has got the those raised ceilings in there. It's very, very tall ceiling, just makes this this home look even bigger. Um, and off of that foyer, you have the study um, is what you're looking at. That's towards the front of the house. And then also that hallway that's leading um, to the powder room. Yeah, we've opted for a lot of uh, luxury vinyl plank through here. And you can see we've done the 1x6 mm -hmm. baseboard and 1x4 casing, very craftsman style inside, a little more contemporary than some of our other model homes. But we try to kind of want to do something different for you guys because you, know, yes. you know that we we can do other things besides beautiful board and bat hardy plank farmhouses. <laughs> yeah. We can do those too. We do a lot of them. Well, and we also went, because the ceiling heights and everything are so tall on this, we also went with the taller doors um, to yeah. go along with those baseboards just to make sure everything was was in the proper scale. So. For sure. So, yeah, let's see. Um, we've got a yeah. few other people commenting, so let's check in. Awesome. Um, we had Anna, who is joining us from Katie, um, helped decide between the Abilene Modified and the San Jacinto. They're almost the same square foot, please. <laughs> So the one benefit I can think of of the Abilene is that the kitchen is to the front of the house. So it's really going to depend upon where you want, where you want your view and where you want the kitchen oriented. So if you're looking for something 
where um, the kitchen is more towards the back and it feels more of a part of the family room space, I would lean towards the San Jacinto. Um, if you, if your view is to the front and that is where you want your kitchen and you want it a little bit more enclosed, so it's still connected to the family room, but it's kind of tucked off, um, into its own area, I would go with the Abilene. That's my yeah. And, and a couple of other things. So the, the San Jacinto, while it is a split floor plan, it's split front to back, right? So all the bedrooms mm -hmm. are on one side of the home, but it does have separate entrances from the master and, and then to the other the spare bedrooms. Uh, but the San Jacinto has more rooms than the Abilene. Uh, so the San Jacinto is, is standard with a four bedroom and a flex room and a formal dining room. So it's got, you know, it's a little bit more cut up, you might say, um, but it does have more rooms that you can do more things with. Whereas, you know, kind of out of the box, if you will, the Abilene, while it's just under 2,400 square feet, it's within 130, 140 square feet of the San Jacinto, but it is three bedroom and a study, no formal dining. So the rooms are bigger. The bedrooms mm -hmm. are bigger. The master bedrooms are bigger. Spare bedrooms are bigger. Family room's about the same. Um, family room in the San Jacinto is probably a little bigger. It's 18 by 20. Um, San Jacinto is probably a little bit more formal of a home, a little more formal, a little more traditional home where the Abilene is going to be definitely more kind of like your country living, wide open, country kitchen, you know, big views out the back, unobstructed, not a lot of walls. So it's uh, they are they definitely serve different purposes, but I can see how you'd be, you'd be torn mm -hmm. for sure. Not sure we helped, but right, exactly. So with that, thing. she's like, "Yeah, I know all of those things. Thanks." <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, I know, I know. Thanks, guys." <laughs> all right, we've got another Eric checking in from Beaumont. Hey, Eric. What's up, Eric? Uh, we got Janine saying, "Howdy, Tilson Cousins, working with the amazing Sarah in Georgetown on a San Jacinto." Okay, oh, well, great. Janine, tell Anna what you liked about the San Jacinto, and we can, we can start campaigning. Um, let's see. Eric's short list of plans is the Brazoria Sea and the Polidoro Sea. All right. So we're going for a farmhouse. Awesome. Yeah. yeah I don't think you could go wrong with either one. No, so. we're definitely going split floor plan. So, yep. All right. We've got Will saying hi from Klondike. What's up, Will? And then he's got to he's got to go. Hope y'all have a blessed day and week. Y'all are in good hands with Tilson. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. Appreciate that, buddy. Got to go deal with all the farm animals. Yeah, he's that critter, and it's dry. It's we have good weather right now, so now's the time to do it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, you guys keep putting in your questions. Listen, if you have any questions about this house or any questions about anything else, and we are going to check out the family room and the kitchen. Let's go see it. All right. So in the model home of the Paladero there in San Marcos, we've opted for a cathedral ceiling in the family room that goes onto the covered porch. But in all the Paladero designs, no matter where you do the model or not, you have a clear open span from the back of the family room wall all the way to the back of the kitchen of nearly 45 feet of open space, which is beautiful because that's exactly what our customers are after. One big, large living area that encompasses the kitchen, the dining area, and the family room. So even though the family room is only labeled at maybe 18 by 19, which is enormous, you really have the entire space of 18 by 45 feet that's all one big gathering place. So one very unique aspect of the Paladuro is the way we've chosen to do the dining space. Now, most of our customers don't really need a formal dining room. That's why they're moving to the country so that everybody can have a space to be together. So we really built a gigantic eat-in kitchen where the dining space, breakfast area, all of it is encompassed as part of the family room and part of the kitchen. Yes, you can opt to convert the study into a formal dining if you need to do that, but really most of our customers, this is exactly what they want. So the Paladero comes again with a large kitchen, one of the largest in our whole portfolio. In the model home here in San Marcos, we opted for the alternate kitchen that you can do on, the, on our customizations, which actually encompasses two separate islands. Um, so one of the largest spaces that we have in any of our portfolio, tons of workspace for that <laughs> country kitchen you always wanted, lots of gathering places for your guests, really different gathering areas for where people want to be. So the Paladero kitchen is really the heart of this home. We've opted for the cooktop, separate double ovens, Obviously, there's tons of customization that you can do. Beautiful vent hood that's the focal point of this kitchen that kind of draws your eyes from the family room all the way back to that back kitchen wall. We've done a subway tile that's very popular these days. Lots of cabinets, lots of storage, beautiful customization that we've done, and the options are really limitless. So obviously, when we're doing model homes, we have to kind of keep up with the times, and some of those things are code-related. 
You're gonna notice in our kitchen here in the Paladuro, the way we do our outlets now is gonna be a raised outlet that comes out of the countertop itself. So the code changed where you can no longer have the outlets on the sides of the island. Many builders have opted just to eliminate outlets altogether. We know that our customers are using their kitchens, okay? So we know a lot of cooking is going on. So for that reason, our design team came up with a fantastic solution of these raised outlets. They raise up, you can plug appliances into them like a crock pot or Instapot, something like that. When you're not using them, they push back down. And a neat feature that we do, the top of it is a charger for your cell phone. So nestled in the kitchen is a, is a door to what looks like just an ordinary pantry. But as you walk into that room, you're gonna notice it's not your ordinary pantry. It is large enough to be a bedroom, tons of storage, which is exactly what our customers need because they're living out away from town. They need to be able to stock up on their goods. That place will accommodate it. You could actually big enough and we could put outlets in there where you could accommodate your air fryers, bread makers, ice cream makers, different appliances actually inside the pantry if you needed to do that. Right. Is it obvious that my wife uses a crock pot and Instapot? Like, did I make it? <laughs> <laughs> they are both good things to use. Yeah. I do. I don't use the Instapot. I'm a little afraid of the whole pressurization thing, but Dude, I love my crock yeah, pot. Once you figure out how to do it, I will say it, it does take a little bit of learning. But you know, I'm very risk adverse, and like anything yeah. that like you could potentially blow up, I just really it just makes me makes it me is twitchy. A game so changer twitchy. for mashed potatoes. You oh. will never you will never cut them up and boil them again. You put them in there, little, the little small, the little smaller potatoes, put them in their hole, steam those puppies. In you like know what else is a minute. game changer for mashed potatoes? If you can find it, or Rida oh, makes this thing, it's called steam and mash. And you just, it, it they're already pre-cut up and you put them in the microwave and, and then you mash them. Huh. <laughs> all right, we all well, have welcome to the cooking show. Uh, <laughs> I'm Look, not gonna if you go have a kitchen like that, that in a house, it's going to turn into a cooking show. It just that's no, just how it works. Amazing cook. I'm not. I'm not going head to head with that. <laughs> All right. So here is that big, beautiful, gorgeous family room, which is a huge room to begin with, and then this cathedral ceiling just makes it look even bigger. Um, so, like Eric was mentioning in in the video, technically you have an 18 foot by 19 foot family room. However, because of the dining room and the kitchen it is a much larger space, um, which 18 by 19 is, is not small to begin with. So um, you can you can do this however you like. And then you can see that gorgeous, how that cathedral ceiling extends back onto that rear porch. So you can get all the views from your property. Just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this is the dining area. Um, so right, you know, connected to the family room. Again, this is a nice big space. We've got a table with six chairs there and you can walk through this thing, no problem. Um, so absolutely a great space and just a great way to have everything just flow together. And here is that beautiful kitchen. So this is the alternate kitchen option, um, like we were discussing. So you've got the double ovens. Um, and your dishwasher is in that front of, is in the front, uh, sorry, double islands. You do have double ovens too, but this is double islands. Um, but um, your dishwasher's in that front island, and then you've got your space um, for, for bar stools there. Um, also your sink. Um, you can see kind of the top of that pop-up outlet that Eric was talking about in the video. These are very cool. I like this. this is a good way, good way to handle the situation. You've got it in that center island as well. And that center island actually has the microwave inside of it, um, which allows you to have the more decorative vent hood. So those things are separate. And then the double ovens over on that left wall. Um, but just so much prep space, so much storage. Um, this is a kitchen. This home that, that is designed for couldn't get it. So we took a side picture to show you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And I mean, there's even more, honestly, we probably could have taken, could have included the other side because yeah. there's storage and counter countertops next All to those the, ovens as well. Refrigerators so. here. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a ton. Going. Yeah. There's a lot of space in here. There's a lot of space. If you really need kitchen storage, really want space to entertain, like this is the ultimate floor plan for that. Um, no it's doubt. just absolutely beautiful. And here is that pantry that really could have, as it, you know, could have been a bedroom. I agree. Would be a great nursery. Would be, you could, you could do lots of things in this space. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big, large pantry. We've done it just how it would be included in the home. So you can see what, what is included. Um, but, um, this also would be a great space to, if you're looking for a separate kind of prep kitchen kind of area, if you want all those appliances off, you could do my, many, many things. You could you add extra cabinets, have countertops, you could, do, you could right do another, yeah, your freezer, you could have another refrigerator. Like this is, this is a great space that you can do whatever you'd like with, um, yeah, just a massive oversized wine experience. fridge, yeah. ice maker. Like there's, there's all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. you can do in here. Yes. Yeah. I could, I could be kindled up in here for a long time. It'd be fine. <laughs> Me, my double stuff Oreos and my Instapot. It'd be fine. And your Instapot. <laughs> Make some hot chocolate in that crock pot. You're good to go. You better believe it. We got a couple of right, well, we, Yeah, we do have some questions coming through. Um, so Anna is saying, yeah, between the Abilene and the San Jacinto, both of the floor plans are great. So yeah, tough choice. It really just depends upon what you're, what you're looking for. Are you looking for more spaces or are you looking for more space in your spaces? I think that would kind of be, um, the deciding factor, um, on that. Uh, we've got Ashley. One thing I noticed with the San Jacinto, the family room has entrances, walking paths on all four corners of the room. So you can't really anchor a sofa. The couch would have to float in the center. Yes, that is true. Or otherwise you'd be, if you coming out of one of the rooms, you would have to be kind of walking around. So that is something to take, to take into consideration with that. Yeah. It's plenty of room to, to, to do float that couch. But if you prefer to have your couch against the wall, that is something to think about. I'm um, Eric is saying I have a lots of questions today. What does oh. the rear elevation of the Polydor C look like? Let's see if we can. I wasn't working on that. Were you working on that? I didn't read ahead. Other uh, Eric's working on that. Oh, I do have it. Yeah, there we are. I do. I don't know if I can. Can I share that and share my PowerPoint and share all the things? Uh, you might have to unshare the PowerPoint to share that. You're responsible for sharing and unsharing. I don't share well. <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah, stop sharing. Here we go. And share uh, um, that. Is that it? That is it. So this would be the rear. This here would be the rear elevation of the Paladuro C. So here's your family room windows. Here's those double doors um, that you saw coming out. Here's your master bedroom. And then here's the master bath. And this is the, the rear bedroom. So this would be the, the right side of the home and, of course, the left side. And then for those of you who don't know, this is what the front of the Palo Verde Sea um, looks like, which I actually pulled this up to answer someone else's question about a bonus roof, which is why I had it up. Not because I'm just that, that smart. I just got lucky, which I'll take yeah. over skill any day. So. <laughs> and as you can see, on the, it's easier to see on the side elevations, at least for me. There is a there's still a back porch on it. It's a little bit. Harder to see if you're not used to looking at these line drawing exterior elevations. But if you look where you see the rear, like where you see on the left and the right, you can see that there is a back, there's a back porch area happening. How'd I do? All right. You did great. Um, and then the other question, which you're going to need to reshare the PowerPoint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Janine is saying, hi there. Is it possible to have that cathedral ceiling and large porch, but add a small bonus room? Thanks so much. So okay. I was playing with the custom options and it won't, Physically let me combine them, but I don't honestly see why. So I'm thinking there's just like maybe a little tweak, but maybe Eric's going to educate me. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. It can be done. Um, and it would be easiest to do it with you. So you're going to get more space in a C elevation type of deal with this than you would the the E, for instance, because sure, the, the, the roof pitches matter. So, uh, mm -hmm. for example, you know, if you figure the top of the ceilings is kind of right here where I'm kind of dragging the mouse back and forth. So you have all of that attic space to work with if you to do a bonus room. You have a lot more volume um, on a gable style roof, which is what this is, as opposed to a hip. So this is hips going off the back, but the E is all hip. Um, mm -hmm. So this is kind of where you see on some of our uh, deals that we do, the bonus room sizes vary. This is why they vary. Um, because you've got more attic volume to work with on some of the gable roofs than you do. So I, I would say, you know, regardless, we can make some tweaks over here, particularly if you have a garage on it, to get the staircase in and to be able to get up to that bonus space. But yes, I mean, we, we, the house this size, we can definitely figure out a way to get um, a bonus room with that cathedral ceiling and cathedral ceiling porch. So 
Yeah, and the way in this option that it lays out, the bonus room actually goes above the master bedroom. Um, in some of our plans, it's not possible to have that cathedral ceiling in the family room and a bonus room because mm -hmm. the bonus room is over the family room. But this is one where we should be able to do it because the bonus room is off somewhere else. That's right. All right, um, we've got Suzette saying, hi there. Once construction begins, are we able to change the color of cabinets to another color from the ones that were chosen? Typically, no, Suzette. That's that's why we have you do those selections because there are lead times on those things. I mean, you can always ask the builder, but my, uh, the the standard answer is usually not because they they do mm -hmm. have long lead times and with manufacturing and with staining and the whole process, um, and they are done to order. They're specific. They come out and measure for them, um, but also they 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 start putting working on some of the parts and components almost immediately. So I would not. I would tend to lean to no. Uh, it would have to be a pretty rare instance that we would be able to, to change that. Okay. Um, Ashley is asking, could we have the alternate kitchen size, pantry size, and instead of the two islands, do one ginormous island? Also, can we put cabinets and counters in the pantry? Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Um, so what we we would have to do probably something special order uh, for the countertop for that. Uh, not the pantry, mm -hmm. that's easy. Um, but for the, it's going to be a very, two large slabs, minimum two large slabs, maybe even three, if you did one large island the size of those. So that'd be the only thing. But yes, it's totally doable. Okay, awesome. Um, and Phyllis is saying she loves that kitchen, loves, love the kitchen, wishes the Breckenridge plan had something similar. So we might be able to you ask, ask us what you're looking for and we might be able to, oh, the pantry, Just looking for the pantry. That's going to be a little bit more difficult um, <laughs> with where, where the kitchen is in the Breckenridge, but we can, we can look at making some adjustments. Um, and let's see, Janine is saying um, to Anna, her, her advice is the San Jacinto is cozier. Um, so kind of what you're looking for. I agree. I think it's yeah. I know. I, it, the San Jacinto is Eric's favorite. If he were to pick a favorite floor plan child, it's it's the same. To be fair, I worked at the spring office for a number of years. It fed my family well. So it's <laughs> it's hard to not be biased. Absolutely. Um, and then other Eric is asking, any way to still have the double oven and under counter microwave with the standard kitchen? I don't see why not. Yeah. you As long as you have an island or some player to put the... So yeah, we could put the microwave uh, in the cabinet to the left of the kitchen sink in the standard in the standard kitchen, and instead of having because already it comes standard with an, a microwave oven combo, right? So it's a microwave upper oven lower. So if you put the microwave in the cabinet kind of to the left of the sink, you could absolutely do. And we have seen people that do all three, um, but you mm -hmm. need to both both parties that are using it need to be rather tall like over five eight <laughs> to do that because you get a microwave and then double oven so what works best is yeah take the microwave put it over there to the left of the sink and then do a double oven and no problem at all okay um Great charlie question. brown is asking could we get the polyduro look on a two-story like a grand barrier or goliad or on something like the preston preston be easy the preston for sure um because that's actually what this plan was based off of yep. so um that would be yeah, sure. we'll um, strong on the two stories charlie is uh the varying plate heights so how it it kind of does different things where you on a on a two-story home that first floor is pretty critical right you need to have in our case a mm -hmm. minimum nine foot ceiling is what we do on a two-story home or really any home um on, on two-story homes for sure and so that kind of all needs to be the same and you kind of lose that look. Now we could do it on the second floor, um, but you would definitely want to look at adding probably garage or something to make sure that the scale is proper. Otherwise, it's going to kind of look like a, a tall Coke can or something if we if we don't uh, get some width on that bottom, some cascade. It, it, it does need to kind of cascade if that, if that makes sense, Don. Is that what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. group? Yeah, it's, that's that's what I was actually going to say because you know with with the one story you know we have the freedom that you know that porch that we showed you is 14 foot ceilings and certain rooms are 10 foot ceilings and other rooms are nine foot ceilings when we're starting with a nine foot we're and we're trying to do all of the adjustments we, we'd only really be able to vary the heights on the second floor um so it, it could look it could look odd so you'd want to add something maybe a little bit sh that's only one story that we could play with um off to the side um, yep but preston all day that look yeah preston all day long 
Um, let's see. Um, Luana is asking, um, any chance of showing a Brazoria D in the near future? We will be building in Fannin County and very visual people would love to see the interior of one. Um, we are working on it. Uh, we have sold a lot of Brazorias. We are waiting on them to close. Um, so I don't know that I have a D in particular, but we definitely have some Brazorias coming up. Um, the other thing I would advise, you can kind of take a look at our Magnolia model. Um, there, the Brazoria is based off of the Magnolia and the most common changes that were made to it. Um, so there is, it's not a D, but it's a C, um, would be the equivalent of the Brazoria C that a customer built. I will drop the link um, to you after this, Lou and us. You can kind of take a look at that and that'll give you a rough idea of what the interior of a Brazoria is going to look at. It looked like really the changes made to the plan were already incorporated in what the customer had done with that home. All Noted. right. And then um, Suzette saying, thanks for the response. I chose three different cabinet colors for certain rooms. For example, I have white for my kitchen and black for the restroom. Would I be able to change one restroom cabinet to white? Yeah, that, Suzette, again, that'd be a great question to ask the building superintendent. I just don't know where they are in procurement and mm -hmm. manufacturing because uh, we do those finishes, especially those, those are done in a paint booth facility. So that it's not something that's painted on the job site uh, for good reason. We, we don't. Like we cannot get the same finish quality and paint quality job in on a job site as we can get in a paint booth. Like when you do a right. similar general paint cars at the dealership, right? Cars are painted in a factory in a paint booth. So um, we want the same thing. And then that finish is baked on um, for hardness, actually. So anyway, ask the building superintendent. Um, hopefully it's not too late, um, but but don't but don't be too disappointed if it is. Okay. Please. It has a please. Please. Thanks, sense. Thanks, sense. <laughs> All, All right. Keep dropping your questions in the chat, folks. We will answer every single one of them. We're going to keep showing some of these videos um, for sake of time. But ask your questions. Yes. We'll stay on as long as y'all want to. All right. Let's move on to the master suite. Let's check it out. So the Paladuro comes in at about 2,500 square feet in the standard plan. The way we've got it customized at the model home in San Marcos, it's a little over 3,000 square feet. But in any case, it is a true split floor plan. So the spare bedrooms are on one end of the home and the master suite is truly its own suite, almost as a home apartment in a different part of the home. So as you enter the master suite of the Paladuro, immediately you're going to feel like it's a spa treatment. Massive master bedroom with huge windows looking out to the back of your property. And as you enter into the bathroom, it's one of the most unique, most glamorous bathrooms we've ever built in a model home ever. So the master bathroom, you're going to notice that we've opted for the tub, which is a freestanding tub that's actually located inside of a massive shower. We were inspired by some high-end luxury hotels where we saw some things like this. And we said, you know what, that's something our customers would really like to have on their space, on their country land. And so we did it and we made it beautiful and our customers love it. So to accommodate this size home, it has the master bath to match. Large master bath, dual vanities, lots of storage, and a walk-in closet more than enough to accommodate two people. Everything you could possibly need for a nice, serene place for the owner to retreat at the end of a long day. Yeah, that space is definitely a wonderful owner's retreat, just separate from everything. Um, probably, if, if you're looking to have a spa in your house, this, this is this is the option this is for it, you. Yeah. The crown jewel of of master suites for Tilson, like this is this is it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, this is that view of that master bedroom. Um, you can see a little peek at that ceiling treatment. It's so hard to get good pictures of this stuff. <laughs> The ceilings are already high, and then we're trying to get pictures of the ceilings. But you can see it's got that step ceiling um, in there with the the um, rough sawn wrapped beams. And by the way, that is a king size bed and king size furniture. Like this is to scale this. Yes. Like, this is it's massive. It's big, big house. Yeah, very big. And wall of windows again. So whatever view you've got going on on your property, you can enjoy it um, from your master suite. Um, and then I, Eric is in a rush to show you the bathroom because yeah, it's sorry. just. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. So um, the the less interesting side is you do get separate dual vanities. She has her space. He has his space. They shall not meet. Um, lots of storage. Lit, you know, big linen cabinets. Um, you know, just just a great great space. Great Natural space. light pouring in. Like it's it's mm -hmm. 
yeah, the, the linen cabinets are hard. To, it, anyway, it's hard to get it all in. But like you said, it nice and spot. spacious. And yeah, and then you got that peek in the mirror of the of what's behind it. Um, yeah, this is that, you know, just enclosed one space spa like uh, wet room for lack of a better word, but fully tiled area that's got your freestanding tub in the middle of a huge walk in shower. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous bathroom. Yeah, a couple of doors, couple of shower heads, like the whole thing going on. Yes, just absolutely beautiful. Um, and then here is that master closet, which again um, rivals the pantry in size. Like this, this could probably also be a room, a nursery, a study, a, you know, whatever you want. This is a large, large space, large closet space for everything. Um, this is the shelving that comes included. Um, with the home, with this layout. But again, this is another thing that like the pantry, we could, you know, customize however you like. If you wanted to do cabinets, if you wanted to, this closet is probably big enough. You could do an island in it. Um, if you were into that, um, you know, just, just lots of things you could make, but absolutely large space, lots of storage. All right, let's see. We have Ashley asking a question. No, um, she's more. She's more revealing. Just husband detail. That's what we do. It's we're, we're Neanderthals. Okay. Well, it's what fine. I, my, <laughs> so my she loves like, how the bathroom looks. So let's bring it back. I'll bring it back up. Um, worried about reading in the bath and my husband getting the, getting 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 the book wet when he takes a shower. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, there is there is some space in there. So there's a lot of space. Yeah. There's that's, a lot of space. Big. So this picture doesn't do it justice, but it is. This is big. Like there there would be. Mm -hmm. You'd have to be getting pretty out of control to, to get water over there where, where you are. I'm not saying it's not a real possibility, but yeah, I mean, you know, um, I think, I think you could probably make it happen, you know, and, and, uh, the fact that you let him in the same space as you in, in that serene moment when you're reading is, you know, hey, kudos to y'all. It's a successful marriage. Good for you. I was going to say, if you're trying to relax and read a book, there are Which, other showers. In the I house. would get Just side saying. eye. If I walk into my Just wife's room, they're reading a book and I'm like, I'm going to shower. <laughs> not in here. You're not. You go outside. This is not happening. <laughs> but also the Kindle Paperwhite is waterproof. So that's an option too. I'm trying to find mine, but good news. I'm not playing hooky and reading my Kindle while I'm at my office. It's in, it's in my house. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you have options, Ashley. We can Kindle's we can work a game changer. But I think if he is splashing, he's doing it on purpose. Like he's he's actually moved the shower head and aimed it at we you. We're troublemakers. We're troublemakers. Star can't have nice stuff. We yeah. all why you can't have nice stuff. <laughs> That's the way it is. That's fair. At least at least you're self aware. Totally. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys keep dropping your questions in, and we are going to take a look at the rest of this house. Here's right. Yeah, Eric's right. These are definitely first world problems. <laughs> so the guest bedroom's on the opposite side of the home from the master. Again, completely separated. Everybody has their own private space. The stock plan comes with three bedrooms total, so two spare bedrooms on the other side. So in the model that we've built, it is a four bedroom, three and a half bath home. Two bedrooms share one of the bathrooms, and then the back fourth bedroom has its own private bath and walk-in closet, so that could be kind of for the, the oldest teenager or maybe guests that are staying longer or a mother-in-law suite. So we would be remiss if we didn't mention the gigantic back cover porch on the model home here in the Paladero in San Marcos. So again, we opted for that cathedral ceiling that goes from the family room all the way out onto the cover porch. Beautiful wooden truss, lots of natural materials used out there. The largest space that we have on any of our model homes to gather outside, but tons of space, again, which is exactly what our customers want, that beautiful view of their land looking out onto it. So the Paladero model home here in San Marcos, as you go into the foyer, you're immediately gonna notice that we have a half bath for guests to use there, but what you're really gonna be drawn to, and it kind of sneaks up on you, the size of it, is the study of the Paladero model. It could very easily accommodate two people working in that space. It's one of the largest study, the largest study that we have in any of our model homes. And we have it set up so that you could work from home, you could do school from home, whatever you need to have done, you can do it in that room. Plus, it's flexible where you could convert it to another bedroom, dining space, something like that if you needed to. One of the things we didn't mention is the garage location. We opted, because of this constriction of our property here in San Marcos on the freeway, we opted to display more house and not garage, but clearly, there are tons of garage options for the Paladero, side entry, front entry, two car, three car, whatever you would need for you and your family. So the Paladero model here in San Marcos 
has a beautiful utility room. Again, one of the largest we have in any of our homes. Lots of space, plenty of space for your washer, dryer, storage, upper cabinets, countertop. We've got, uh, we have a lot of customers that can do a dog washing station. There's room to accommodate that. So you're gonna notice that you have lots of options set up in that utility room. Again, designed for that country living, space for a freezer, anything you need to accommodate that country lifestyle. Yeah, just lots of lots of thing, lots of other rooms just complete in this house. Um, all of those bedrooms are very generous in size. Again, I, I hate to keep saying biggest, but they're they're just big. They're just big. Um, these are this is full size furniture um, in bedroom two, which is that front bedroom. Um, and yeah, lots plenty of space. Um, this is bedroom three. Um, this is this is two twin beds um, in that. So these are not full, but you can easily see how you could you could fit a full bedroom. Uh, a full bed in there and have plenty of space um, to stretch out. So just great, great bedrooms. Um, this is the guest guest bathroom that bedroom two and three would share. Um, and again, great, good size. You've got your your linen um, cabinets in there and your drop down hamper um, that comes with it. And just you know, good bathroom. Um, and then this is that bedroom four option um, that adds in bathroom three. So the door that you see is the door into the the other bathroom, the other full bathroom, but this is just a great self-contained um, guest suite or, you know, suite for mother-in-law or, you know, older child, just, just pri private bathroom, private area tucked way into the back of the house. And that's that bedroom that's in there. I mean, the bathroom that's connected to that bedroom. Yeah, it has its own ensuite with, you know, storage mm -hmm. space, closet, very nice. And that is the bedroom four closet because it's big enough to be notable and shared. Um, <laughs> again, it's a great standalone space um, for guests or like I said, mother-in-law situation or older child. Um, so yeah, just great, great space. Uh, this is that gorgeous rear porch because when you add the um, cathedral ceiling option on the porch, I don't know if you guys noticed and I forgot to highlight it, we keep the original porch as well. So you basically end up with a double porch. Um, but just a great outdoor space um, to get out there and, and enjoy your land. Uh, it's probably a little quieter than our land um, in this situation, but um, just a great, great outdoor space to gather and plenty. As you can see, plenty of room. We have a picnic table and a full like outdoor living room set set up and this porch still looks slightly empty. Um, just a it even has a kid's table or as we call it, my family, yeah. Eric's table. <laughs> And I noticed we put it where there are no windows, so the parents don't even have to worry about what's happening. Right. And you kick, kick them outside. And, Correct. Yeah. And then that is that full rear view, so you can see um, exactly what the full exterior looks like. So yeah, just a gorgeous, gorgeous house. The grass is greener there, Dawn. Looks great. It is. <laughs> Photoshop helps because it's not that green right now. <laughs> it's dormant. Our if the night night. Marcus is watching, we are not overwatering. Um, yeah, exactly. That's what we're going to do. Stinking we we the assisted city. the pictures, as you can see in the videos. There, there was different lighting. Uh, um, <laughs> that's it. Here we go. Richard's going to get a fine. That's what's going to go down. We've seen it on Facebook. And here is that study um, that we mentioned that's right at the front of the home, off of the foyer, and just a very generous space. Um, the study is 13 feet by almost 16 feet. Um, so very, very big space, um, plenty of room for multiple people. Like I said, if you wanted to do a homeschool classroom in here, like, you know, kids' playroom, um, lots of uses for this space. Chess, checkers, arm wrestling, whatever. Whatever needs to go down. Yep. You can make that yeah, happen. whatever. Pool table, foosball table, whatever you want to do. Gin tournament, whatever. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you got it. L like or comment below on the uh, tiger rug. Pat Pat Mayo is very proud of his tiger rug that he got snuck in there. <laughs> That's so cute. Eclectic. Well, he got his cow in the Barton Springs, so <laughs> I guess we had to. He sneaks um, and here is that utility room, um, which again, great space. Um, for you has that cabinetry um, in there. Um, yeah, just a great big space. And again, this these can be customized with all of those options that we were talking about. Um, you know. Now, 
We do have questions. We got comments. We want to talk to all y'all folks. Do drop your questions and comments into the chat. We are still live on YouTube, live on Facebook, answering all of them. They can pertain to this home. It could be about financing. It could be about customization. It could be about site preparation, utilities, whatever you need help with. That's what we're here for. So fire away. Yep. Let's go. Absolutely. Lightning round. Um, Ashley is sharing that, that Eric, you should never underestimate the wildness <laughs> of a Marine. Ashley, and they call panic. them devil dogs for a reason. <laughs> Um, Tim is saying mother in law, sweet ooh. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Somebody's father in law is going to outlive it. It's going to happen. There's going to be a father in law suite sometime. In law suite. In law suite. Yeah. Um, Denise is asking in the bathroom, um, pantry, could you change the drop down hamper door to a drawer? Yes, you could absolutely change that um, to a drawer. You could change it to a cabinet that opens with shelving in it. We can mm -hmm. customize those cabinets however you like. Um, Tom is asking, what does this house cost? I just joined. Great question, Tom. So obviously it's going to be based on where you're building because our price is based on the county that you build in. But the, the way we have it built out there, I put it close to the $600,000 range. Um, it's going to be pretty close, you know, somewhere between five seventy five dollars and six fifty, dollars depending on where you're building. Um, starts, you know, base model with none of the options, things like that. You can probably get it close to that four. 50 465 range um and then you can go up i've seen them um pushing eight hundred thousand dollars uh so that's that's about but about, about 600 the way we're kind of showing it again depending on where you're building okay all right aristotle is asking i heard tilson is taking over home loans can you touch on that a bit what yes thank you aristotle for asking the spitting that wisdom all the way from gatesville by god texas okay so um, yeah, you know, we, a lot of changes are happening in the mortgage industry happens anytime a industry is disrupted. In this case, it's been disrupted by interest rates. Um, so a lot of mergers, a lot of acquisitions, uh, a lot of companies that aren't going to be around anymore happens all the time. We've been here 90 years. We've seen it. Um, now the, so to, to take control of that and help make our customers experience better and our, quite frankly, our business more predictable, uh, we are we are partnering up um, with a, a very large uh, lending institution, and we have uh, started a, a, a smaller business called Wagon Hill Home Loans. So Wagon Hill Home Loans, um, that name is based on a, a, a particular place in, in my family's uh, far, little farm. Uh, so that, from, from Mr. Jack Tilson Allard and Anyway, so Wagon Hill Home Loans, we have a great team. Fortunately, the the bulk of that team and the leadership of that team has been doing on your land home loans for Tilson for over 20 years. So we have an experienced mm -hmm. staff. They've done a ton of loans for customers of ours at, at uh, other entities that they've been with. They have taken the courageous jump to come over and join us um, and on, on this venture. And yeah, Wagon Hill Home Loans is Tilson's single and only now preferred lender. Uh, they have very competitive rates. They have great programs. We have, we can offer all kinds of programs. We can do obviously the easy buy that we've always done. We also mm -hmm. will offer one-time closed construction loans. They can do, um, some financing for some instances where we finance the land as well. They can do FHA, they can do VA. In some cases they can even do USDA, which is an avenue we did not have any access to before. So, uh, yeah, great, great, great company. Stephanie and her team, um, is leading that. And again, they've been working with uh, closely with with Tilson customers and, and the Tilson family for over 20 years doing home loans. So, yeah, it's going to make it a much better process for all of our customers, uh, way more predictable for us, way more predictable, way better customer experience for them. They're super familiar with the appraisals and the, the rural lending and, and the title work and all that kind of stuff. They're fluent in it. So um, highly, highly encourage you to go with Wagon Hill Home Loans, even if you're currently you know under construction. You can switch over to them and uh, I would highly recommend it. So you will probably receive email, phone call, something like that um, from someone on their team or someone on ours. Um, it is legit. It's not spam. It's not a scam. It's it's the real deal. Uh, but trust but verify. If you have a question about yeah, it, call us or call. Absolutely. Them. Call call the number on our website. If you get any communication that, that you are worried about, we can confirm whether it is a real communication or not If it's if you get nervous. Good, good rule of thumb with any type of financing emails totally. or contacts. Um, so Eric is asking, uh, would the rear of the Palo Duro C look like the rear picture of this one with the roof line? Um, 
don't have it up anymore. <laughs> Hold on a second. And I need... Uh, da, 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 da. So it's going to be a little different because the standard is not going to have that cathedral ceiling. So that's definitely going to be a difference um, that you would see. Um, yeah. So you're going to... Let me see if I can throw this up, Don. Uh, let me okay. stop sharing this. I mean, it going to depend on what, you know, what all customizations you do, of, of course. The... And it might be easier to show. Well, I guess we don't show your elevations on the website, do we? No, we don't typically render those. Um, yeah, I don't think which which I is don't... the new software that Drafting has. We'll have them all when, when we when we get to it. Um, we'll have them all pretty. Well, let me see here. I need to bring it over. We're getting there. We're getting there. You guys talk amongst yourselves. I'll get this figured out. <laughs> We'll switch. We'll talk. We'll talk about Phyllis. Eric, we'll come back to you. Okay. Um, Phyllis is asking when the tentative completion of the Lone Star model home is set for. Um, so I'm not sure on the completion date. I, I optimistically think it will be sometime this year. Uh, what I can share is we are actually going into mechanicals and we're doing the installation on that home this week. And we are at, we have actually scheduled our behind the sheetrock tour. Um, if you want to come out and see the model under construction, um, one of our regional construction managers will walk you through the home and show you everything that you don't typically see when the house is finished. So they're going to be looking at the mechanicals, the electric, the plumbing, the HVAC rough-ins, all of that stuff. You can see the insulation. Uh, it's a great chance to come out and see see the part of the houses that you don't usually see um, so you can appreciate the the quality of the construction. Um, so I dropped that link um, into the chat on both YouTube and Facebook. So you guys, if you want to RSVP, that is going to be next Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, so we're super excited about that. But yeah, the Lone Star is coming along. Um, it's one of those, I, I would say we should probably be done by the end of the year, but I just want to, oh, yeah. again, amazing. this was another big one and we're doing a lot of, a lot of new things. So there's going to be a lot of, a lot of like, tweaking it when we start getting into the finishes and making sure everything's right. So, but yeah, we should be, should be good. All right. So on Eric's question of the rear of the Polidoro, Polidoro C. Yep. So this is the rear, am I, is it sharing? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so this would be the rear covered porch. If you did, so on the Polidoro C, if you did the rear cathedrals, the covered porch with cathedral ceiling, this is what it would look like. So pretty similar. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that does kind of go, it's hard to show it with both, but the alternate, and I don't know, um, you know, how big a deal is it. They should, so your alternate bath and actually even your, yeah, that's your master bath um, and alternate to kitchen uh, situation. So basically the window just goes from a, a small one to a big one. It gets a little wider. You add some square footage. I, it doesn't let me show those with the, um, yeah, the cathedral ceiling. Um, click the bottom one that says model option. Oh boy, here we go. Your very bottom one. There you go. go. So that's what it would look like on the on the rear. But again, you got a gable style roof as opposed to the hip. That's really the only difference um, mm -hmm. in those two. So hope hope that All helps. right. Awesome. Um, and then he's also asking about the Brazoria exterior picks, particularly the sides and the rear. Um, so that I would put you, I would encourage you to look at the same link that um, I dropped into Facebook. Um, for Luana um, of that, that's going to be your closest to that Magnolia that I shared is going to be the closest that we would have to a Brazoria um, C. And I believe there are. Yeah, there's a there lot are, of Magnolia Cs. A lot of them. Yeah. Yep. Um, very popular plan. And yeah, the, the, the sides yep. and the rear are going to look, I mean, almost identical. Yeah. And like I said, we, we kind of base the Brazoria off of that home. That Brazoria C elevation and everything is based off of that customer home that was built. Um, and David is asking, should we wait to drill a well until the Tilson rep comes out to look at the site? I would recommend it. Yeah. Because there's, there's a lot, that's a great question, David, there, cause there's a lot of, uh, restrictions around where your septic system and be where, where things can be relative to where the water well ultimately ends up. Um, I will say it, it's, it's a little bit easier, um, to locate a, a water well there, but. Um, the septic system, obviously, it needs to be on the downhill side, typically, of where the house is going to be. So the lower end of the property, just because you want all that fall running that mm -hmm. way. But not necessarily. But I, 
I'd say that, yeah, I mean, unless you're just, you know, years and years and years out and you want to plan on RV or something up there and want water to hook up, there's, there's really not a reason to have it drilled beforehand. Let us come out there. Let us give you some pros and cons. Maybe look at the neighbor. We want to know where it's going to depend on where their septic system is, where their water well is. I don't know how much land we're talking about, but, but if there's neighbors nearby and they have water wells and septic systems, that will come into play also um, because the state has restrictions. TCEQ has restrictions. Um, your Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, another one of your great state agencies out there protecting you from yourself um, to help make sure that um, everybody's abiding by the, the safety standards that have been established by our legislature. Okay. Um, and Jessica is asking, we are just starting on our home build in Hood County. Will our loan be swapped over to Wagon Hill? So that will be your choice, Jessica. We, we are not going to force anyone to do anything. Um, but I would highly recommend you at least give them to give me opportunity. Um, highly recommend it. Okay. Um, Eric is asking, could I take the front gable off of the Polidoro Sea and put it on the Brazoria Sea and add accent copper colored metal roof to the porch overhang portion, obviously for an additional cost. Yeah. Yeah. You can do, so you're wanting that kind of that one almost cyclops is a bad word for it, but it's kind of cyclops like kind of a dormer on the, on the Polidoro Sea. Um, and yeah, to kind of do that little raised plate thing and do, you can do that. Yeah. Cause the, the, again, the second floor the, in both of those instances we're looking at, it's purely cosmetic. It's not, it's not, there's not actually a second floor up there, uh, any of that resort you see or the Paladero sea. So yeah, if you prefer to have that, um, be kind of similar looking to our, uh, the Brian sales office, our design center there in Brian, Texas, it doesn't have a copper metal, but it has a dark colored, um, almost like a gunmetal brownish gray metal roof. So, yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, Denise is asking, at what point in the process do you get approval for your loan? Okay. So there's a uh, pre-approval and then there's loan commitment or loan approval. That's a great question. So uh, pre-approval is, is a pre-qualification. It's exactly that. It's, it's a, it's a cursory glance at usually, you know, you fill out a, a what we call a buyer information sheet or some people call it a credit application. Uh, you do authorize them to to pull, to pull credit from one of the three, really all three bureaus. They do pull a commercial credit report, so it's a little bit different animal than like your myfico.com or creditkarma.com. Those are not um, uh, commercial credit reports. They're not bad, but they're they're not quite as in depth and detailed um, as as a commercial report that's pulled by a mortgage lender or a a, a car financing company. So they do pull that and then they base on just whatever you tell them that your income is, they assume that you're telling the truth. Okay. So that's really the difference between a pre-approval and then a fully underwritten loan commitment. So the next phase of that mm -hmm. would be, and so that that's done typically right before you sign a contract for a pre-approval. Um, and then during that upfront process that Don and I always talk about that, that three or four months or so of, of due diligence of, you know, we're doing permits, we're doing design stuff, you're doing color selections, you're doing um, engineering, geotech investigations, all that kind of stuff. That's when your full loan approval is also being done. So full loan approval would be they're going to, um, within your control, they're going to ask for all of that stuff you told them. Let Now we're going to document it. Okay. We yeah, want your last two years of W-2s. We want your last 30 days bank statements, your last two years of, of uh, your last 30 days pay stubs. Um, tax returns, if you're self-employed, things like that, 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 you know, retirement account statements, they're going to document all of the things. Um, and then they're also going to order an appraisal. So they're going to take the, a full set of plans that, that we provide to them. And then they ask an appraiser to go out to that property. And as if it were built today, what it would sell for, what are the comparable sales in the area? Sometimes they're called comps. They go collect mm -hmm. all that put an appraisal together, which that, so the fully underwritten loan approval does cost money. They do, they do take a fee because they have to pay for the appraisal. Um, so they take what's called an application fee and that includes the money for the appraisal. That will be fully underwritten loan approval. And that's happening during that same part of the process that we're doing the design and the engineering and the permitting and color selections and all that. It's happening concurrently with that. So I hope that helps. All right. And uh, we've got Janine saying, I saw the concrete floors in the LaSalle and I love them. What are the pros and cons? Um, so the pros are the durability of the floor itself. So you don't have to worry about, you know, damage to the actual floor. The cons are um, if you really, really have your heart set on a consistent color and a specific color, concrete flooring is not for you. 
Um, so stain concrete, the, the stain is going to react how it reacts and it can react differently um, across your, your beautiful living room. Um, so it's going to interact with just the way the concrete settles out the stain. It's not going to be a consistent color. Um, so you are going to have variations. It's kind of like when we talk about the difference between granite and quartz countertops, you know, it's, it's, it's going to look more of a variegated pattern. There's going to be more variations. The other thing that could happen is if during your foundation pour, um, something cute, like a leaf falls down and makes a leaf print in your concrete that that's there. It's also there if it's something that wasn't as cute as a leaf print. So if somehow it got damaged or scuffed or chipped or any of that, that's there too. Um, you know, we can patch those things, but that new concrete is going to be a different color than the old concrete. So it's just something if, if you love it and you love the variation and you're willing to accept that it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to look like a perfectly laid tile floor, then stained concrete is for you. If any of what I just said makes you nervous about doing it, don't do it. Um, that's kind of the pros and cons. Um, here's, here's a super simple way too. also. I mean, walk it onto your porch you have now, whether you're at your office or at your home and look how many different variations and shades of gray that you see on mm -hmm. that concrete. It's going to be amplified when you stain it like a terracotta or a green or a black or whatever. Um, and then you seal it with a, with a we'll seal. We gloss it, like a lacquer finish on right. it. So it's going to just amplify that. And for some people, that's exactly what they want. It's look they're going for. But yeah. for others, it's like it gives them hives. The idea of not mm -hmm. being able to predict. So go, go out on your porch, see how many different how how look look for cracks because those are all going to be amplified. So little surface right. cracks, shades of gray, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be amplified. Um, so something to consider. All right. Um, then Ashley is asking: So is Wagon Hill Home Loans a subsidiary of Tilson or just a partnership? If a partnership, what company is it under? Okay, so it's, it's actually going to be a joint venture. Right now it's a doing business as, but it'll be a joint venture. It's 50% Tilson Homes and 50% One Trust Home Loans. So that's that's who it is. It is a 50, it is partly owned. So not a wholly owned subsidiary of Tilson, but it's 50% us. Enough to give us some, some control and consistency in the process. All right, um, we've got Tessie saying hello well, go, from Boston, there, California. Right? We'll get a little bit of why, oh. right? So okay, we're a home builder, actually. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, our focus is on building your homes for you. Um, and we're really, really good at that. So you, to, the, the prudent way to do this for people to make it successful is you partner up with somebody who's got the resources already in place um, to make this happen for you guys. And that's what that's why we've partnered up with One Trust to do that in this particular joint venture. They've done joint ventures with other builders across the country. And um, so when I, we vetted them um, by talking to those builders. And they vetted us, by the way. They won't do this with just anybody. Um, mm -hmm. So, but, but it's because they have all of the systems in place, the compliance standards in place, uh, the underwriting programs in place, the um, access to, to um, wholesale lines for mortgages in place. All that's done so it's not a distraction for us. Uh, we can focus on delivering um, a really well-built home out of the country for our customers and and still maintain some control and... and um, have a great home home loan experience. That was one of the areas that was lacking, um, according to our surveys, was the financing part. And it's not, I don't think it's ever going to be fun, Don. <laughs> it's ever going to be something yeah. people are like God can't wait to have all this invasive information out there in the universe for people to look at and judge me. And but that's the reality. Okay, so if you're asking for this amount of money, they need to do some due diligence. Um, mm -hmm. and, and be glad they do. You know, we don't. You don't. We the country's been in trouble before making bad loans. So uh, we're not going to let anybody get hurt like that. That's that's why we're partnering up in doing this. But I want to give a little bit of a context as to yeah. why partner up well, and in, do it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But in, by having the 50%, it gives us enough influence that we can, we can come to the table equal when there's something that's affecting our customer experience or policy that might be changing. Or if they decide that they want to sell to somebody else and all of the upheaval, like we have a say in that with, with our other lenders, we could politely suggest, um, but we didn't really have a vote. Um, so that's why we wanted to have ownership in it too. Well said. Thank you for all asking. Right. Yes. Um, Tessie is saying hello from Folsom, California. We have a phone consultation with Bernie sales rep, Kimberly, in an hour. Oh, awesome. Really? She is great. You're going to love her. Kim Laxon is a great person. You guys are going to have, have a great job. Just tell her you want everything that we showed you today. And <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be on it. <laughs> Erin 
Eric is saying, thank you. Lastly, most importantly, give Jerry Shorten kudos because I've worked that round man pretty hard with plans, estimates, contracts, and such. He's remained very patient and done a great job with me. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, he's yeah Jerry, awesome. Jerry is a sweetheart. I love him. He gives the best hugs. Not that I suggest you approach him for one. But, <laughs> but if you do, brace yourself because you're going to get a hug. But if you do, brace yourself because he gives great hugs. I love Jerry. Yeah, he's great. He's in our spring office if you guys are looking for somebody to, to work with. Um, Anna is asking, is the entrance door of the San Jacinto B, is it an option or a standard? So I don't know that we even The side lights. She's referring specifically to the side lights. Oh, uh, I actually believe that they're windows. Uh, so that, that makes it much easier to, to answer. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, so they're on the sides of the um, San Jacinto those are actually windows. Um, so I know it looks a lot like side lights, but so side light, the difference is simply is side lights come with a door system. So a door with one side light, which is the little glass that's on one side or two side lights. It looks like a door with two side lights when you're looking at it, San Jacinto B, C, even probably the A, like the B, but they're actually one foot wide, probably six or seven foot tall, fixed glass windows. Um, and part of that is just, it's a, it's a cost savings, uh, windows are less expensive than side lights, particularly start getting into the mahogany or the naughty alder and things like that. So they're, they're actually windows. So great question. Hard to tell from a, a picture far, far away. Yeah. Um, and Ashley is sharing, yes, I work in the industry with mortgages and understand it. it's, it, it's still not fun or even easy for someone familiar right. with it. You're exactly right. Which is part of the reason we did it. So yeah, thank you for putting mm -hmm. that out there. Yeah. And the other thing was that the partnership allowed us that our, our other lender, our previous preferred lenders didn't have was access to those other programs that Eric was talking about. They couldn't do, you know, easy buy is great. If you have the 10%, absolutely best route to go. But if you have less than that, there are products available that our other lenders could not offer. So, so we're excited to bring those to you guys as well. Uh, and then Denise is asking if you are rolling a current home sale into the balance of your new loan, is that taken into consideration and what info would the lender need? Okay. We've got an existing house we need to sell is what yeah. this sounds like. Yeah. So those are treated case by case, Denise. So um, it, it's going to depend on the area. It's going to depend on the amount of equity that you have uh, in the existing home. Uh, you know, what the sale price is, what the average days on market are. So we'll probably ask for a, a CMA, which stands for a competitive market analysis, be done by um, a real estate agent. And because so, you know, we want everybody, you, us, the lender to be, you know, realistic about, when that house needs to be listed to sell. Uh, we mm -hmm. had some customers that were doing that and they, they kind of, oh, everything's selling in 10, 15 days out here. Well, the market changed and um, that was starting to be the case. And so we had a lot of customers. We had the houses finished. They wanted to move into them, but they couldn't because they still had a, the, the loan. And I'm assuming in this particular case, we're not, we don't qualify for both, uh, which is most people don't. They don't qualify for mm -hmm. both mortgages at one time. So um, they can qualify for one, but it's subject to, the other one being sold prior to closing, but it is done case by case. And, and um, we can walk you through that with our, our, our Brett Martin and his team who they oversee um, all of that closings and real estate and all that kind of good stuff. And they've, they've got a lot of mortgage experience. Um, he managed a mortgage company for a long time, 12, 14 years. So a lot of experience there. Great. And that is the last question I see. Awesome. Thank you all for hanging with us. We know we went over. So, um, but I'm not going to say I'm sorry because I'm not. I'm glad you were here. I'm glad you got your questions answered. Um, done in here. Obviously, we had a website open 24-7. We got a uh, new home specialist on standby to help you guys answer those high-level questions, set those appointments for you um, in the sales offices to get your questions answered. By the way, 12 locations open seven days a week. We want to see you, hear from you, talk to you, answer your questions, get you familiar with the process. Um, we learn from you, too. You come in and start asking mm -hmm. questions, making changes. We learn a lot, and this is awesome. So we've got uh, a Facebook page where you can interact with the Tilson family, the community out here. These folks that have done this are different stages. You get to learn a lot from those. You got a uh, <laughs> Eric saying it's all those questions. Um, not true. Not true. Um, we'd have been here anyway. We got a YouTube channel. We got a YouTube channel that's got mountains and hours of, of uh, content for you to binge. Mm -hmm. It's very neatly organized. At least it was. I think it still is. Um, very, very intuitive to go through there. So hop on there. Also, you can subscribe and like it. That way, when we do post new videos, whether it's customer video tours or new, like when the Polidoro is posted, you'll get notified, which is also cool. Um, let's see. What else? What else? 
What else do we have? We got two in-person seminars um, this weekend on, at our design centers. Uh, so the Melissa location is actually doing a finance one with the team from Wagon Hill. Um, so if you're in that area, that would be a great place to go and ask your questions. Um, and then our Katie location is also doing a seminar this weekend. Um, like I mentioned, we are getting to the behind the sheetrock on the Lone Star uh, model out in Republic Grand Ranch. Um, so that is next weekend and that website is live for everybody to register um, for that. So that is next Saturday, March the 2nd. It's going to be March already. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so that's going on. We've got the models under construction in Angleton. They are getting pretty close. Um, so we'll probably be announcing their behind the sheetrock soon. Um, lots of things going on, guys. Lots of yeah, lots going on. So um, obviously we thank you all. Shout out to Lacey. Um, Very nice. She's having a similar experience. So glad glad to hear that Lacey is being so great with you. And we will definitely share that. Our Waco team is amazing. All of our teams are amazing. So I, th I thank you guys so much for, for shouting out the salespeople because they are, they do work hard with you guys and design everything. And they are, they, they are way more patient than <laughs> I ever will be. Um, so they, they are amazing. So shout out to all of those teams. Makes you wonder how I did it for a living. Um, <laughs> When you're hungry, you'll do anything. So anyway, so thank you so much for joining us, folks. We really appreciate y'all coming to this. Obviously, we'll be around for other more of these. And until then, we really soon to hope make you part of the Tilson family. We'll see you guys later. All right. Bye, everybody.